Welcome in to the Warchant.com report. I'm Jeff Cameron of ESPN Radio alongside Gene Williams and Irish Chappelle, of course, of Warchant.com. And it's Florida State Clemson Week, noon on ABC. But, of course, you'll be at the game. Should be a raucous bunch. Willie Taggart, obviously, imploring the uh, the students and the fans of Florida yes. State to get there early, get a good night's rest on Friday before the big rivalry matchup as number two Clemson comes to town. But before we get to that, uh, some things to, to touch on here. It's, it's midterm time, I guess, and we should probably know uh, we evaluate Willie's start up to this point. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go first and then I'll turn it over to you, Gene. I'll say this, that uh, given what Willie Taggart had to inherit with this offensive line, the problems there, along with a weak linebacker core, uh, I'd say that the, the, the bar had to be lowered a little bit, probably more than we realized before we got a good look at that group uh, at the start of the season. That said, I've had some problems still with in-game stuff, including alignment, delays out of timeouts, those kinds of things, some confusion there that's bothered me some. Uh, they've taken a little while to kind of iron out some of the wrinkles. Things are getting better. But all of that said, I went with a B-. minus. That's not bad, man. I want you as my teacher. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. No, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Though. It's the one thing I think you got to realize when he came in, he inherited that offensive line. What are you guys, what do you think FSU's record would be right now if they had an average offensive line? Five and two, six and one? Yeah, Probably. yeah. Well, easily they. I mean, if you think about it, they had the Miami game won anyhow. Yeah. And, and yeah. So yeah, throwing so an extra six win and in. one easily. You know, yeah. probably. So there. I mean, from that perspective, you have to factor that in. But I'm with you, Jeff. But I will say the one thing I have seen. I have seen some steady improvements. I look every week. The penalties are trending down. The misalignments are trending down. They're getting there. I've liked some of the adjustments. They've done a better job with that. They look completely lost a month ago. So the the, the curve is improving. I'm probably going to throw him about a C plus, and maybe that plus is in there because I think preseason, although Dunn County gets an A plus plus for the goodwill he brought up. So I think that he gets a little bit of a bump there. I do think he can crack my B if they make a bowl. It's as simple as that. It's a minor miracle if they make a bowl, given what's on the docket from a schedule standpoint. But we we have time for that. Your your thoughts on Willie's first six? Yeah, or, I, I think there's a chance. I mean, they're playing better. These last two or three games, they've been playing better. Uh, they won three out of the last four. The, obviously, coming back to, to win the game at Louisville showed a lot. The way they uh, played early against Miami and then this last game, a pretty complete game. Um, so that get, makes me think that you guys are on the right track. But right now, I'm, I'm still going to give them a C. I just think the first those first few games were so bad. Uh, I think they misjudged talent. I think they misjudged uh, how much uh, work they had to do with some of these different groups. Uh, I don't think they gave the offensive line enough help early on. So whatever they saw in practice early on, I think they missed diagnosed what they had. Uh, so I'm going to give them a C, but I think there is a chance to get up to maybe a B if they play really well these last few games. I think getting to a bowl game, as Gene's point, would be huge. But even if they just play well, if they're competitive in this second, second half of the schedule, I think that gets them up to a B. Your criticisms there mirrored mine. I, I, that's why it's a B minus, and I can understand a C or a C plus or something along those lines. We're all pretty jumbled there. They clearly uh, did not know what they were looking at to the, to the extent that you should as a head coach with this offensive line in camp because we heard about how well they had played and how the offense got things moving and it was taking the defense longer to adjust to tempo and all Wasn't these things. Wasn't the scrimmage with 17 touchdowns or something? something I mean, how yeah. is that possible with this yeah. offensive line? And so clearly that was situational and, and they gleaned too much off yeah. of that and then they got into game situations and I think it has taken at times too long to provide the help and to juggle. But again, your hamstring to a certain extent because now you get into the second half of this schedule and uh, we're looking at stuff now. I mean, there's a question on here right now. We should follow it up right away, which is that have we really seen that much improvement or is it the result of such a weak schedule? Well, obviously, it's a little bit of both. I mean, you look at the last three wins Florida State's had, Northern Illinois, and then you played, which are the two worst teams. Let's face it, right now, record-wise, are the two worst teams in the ACC. They have not won a game. Wake Forest and Louisville are 0-7 in conference. So, I mean, that's definitely a factor. But look at it this way. A month ago, if we're talking about improvement, what we saw against Syracuse, I don't think that team doesn't beat Louisville if they play that poorly. They don't hang with Miami in a game they honestly should have won. So, I mean, there, there's no doubt there's definite improvement. As I said before, penalties are going down. You've had two games in a row without sacks, and that's not only you know a little bit on the offensive line, but I think the coaching staff is learning a little bit. Hey, you got to get the ball there quicker. Francois is learning. 
I can't sit back there and read the field. I'm going to get murdered back there. So, I mean, you're seeing adjustments there, which is an improvement. And we've seen adjustments, especially defensively. When is the last time you saw a defense the last couple of weeks make adjustments like Florida State's been able to do? They certainly didn't do it on the last guy, but they, two series by Wake Forest, they made an adjustment, and it was shut down the rest of the game. Yeah, the results in the game since that debacle against Syracuse that you mentioned, 37-19 over Northern Illinois. The big comeback against Louisville, 28-24. Uh, the 28-27 blown lead, heartbreak versus Miami, but I think we still came away from that yeah. game encouraged. Uh, and and then the slow start, but eventually thorough beatdown of Wake Forest this past week. Yeah, I think these last two games, uh, I would say it's more about them than the opponent because these last two games, they looked like, um, I would say against Miami, it looked like a team, it looked at the same level as when Jimbo Fisher was coaching uh, where the program was before in terms of they played really well for a half, they didn't play great for a half, it was a very close game. The last several games against Miami have kind of been close games. This past game, was maybe the first time I've seen where I thought Florida State looked better for a long stretch of time than really they have in the last couple of years under Jimbo Fisher. Uh, they executed from the end of the first quarter well into the fourth quarter. They executed at a really high level on both sides of the ball. They averaged about nine yards of play. They ran a lot of plays. Defense held Wake Forest in check. I mean, Florida State hasn't dominated an opponent like that in a couple of years. And I think, and even the one or two they did, it was a small window for the most part. They've been letting lesser competition hang around for a long time. I think that's a very positive step going forward. What do they have to do in 2019? Both of you can answer this, Gene. I'll go to you first. Uh, to look more like a program that we expect to see at Florida State University, to be on the rise, to be something that we can look to and say, all right, this is back to being a top 10 team competitive in the ACC. How about recruiting some stud Juco offensive linemen? I, I mean, that I put, right, yeah, I put yeah. that right up there pretty high. But, you know, finish it. I mean, continue what we said. We've talked about the improvement the last month. And it's going to be hard to sit there and objectively talk about that a month from now because the competition's so high. But I think you can still look at the product on the field. As Ira pointed out, are they being competitive in these games? Maybe they're not going to win a bunch of them, but are they competitive in these games? Are we seeing parts? Are we seeing less of those alignment problems? Are we seeing fewer penalties? Does it look like a team with a purpose? Do we see that culture kind of changing? I think that's something you didn't have early in the season because it was a hangover from last year. Is that really poor culture? Do we see that continue? If you do that, maybe you sneak into a lower level bowl game. I think it's pretty optimistic, especially if you recruit well at the offensive line. When we come back on the Warchant.com report, obviously, we got to preview uh, a, a new animal. This is a different deal. Uh, Florida State taking on Clemson. It, it will be by far and away the best team they've played up to this point. Dominant uh, in a lot of ways. Will Florida State find a way to pull the shock or pull the upset? We'll preview Clemson when we return on the Warchant.com report. It's football season in Tallahassee, and the only place to go for FSU apparel and merchandise is Garnet and Gold, locally owned and operated by Seminoles for Seminoles for nearly 40 years. Garnet and Gold has the best selection of FSU merchandise in town, but what we really sell is tradition and passion to serve you, the true Seminole fans, at all three of our locations, West Pensacola Street, Killarne, and our flagship store across from Regal Cinema, online at GarnetandGold.com. Shop local and go Knowles. Welcome back to the Warchant.com report. Uh, Willie Taggart had an opportunity to talk a little bit about this week's opponent in Clemson and what a great opportunity it is to be facing the Tigers. Here's Willie Taggart. You want to beat a man, you got to beat the man. So um, uh, great opportunity for the Nose. Looking forward to it. Gets a really, really good football team. Uh, one of the best college football teams out there. Um, you look at their defense, nine returning starters. Um, very challenging. You hear everyone talk about Alabama. Clemson is right up there with them, and they've been in the playoff the last three years. So, uh, great football team. <laughs> Coming to Dope Campbell, and we're looking forward to it. Willie Taggart talking about the Clemson Tigers and the opportunity at hand here for Florida State. And Ira, if they're going to get it done, they're going to be dealing with an offense that is uh, top 10 if you look at traditional stats. Uh, you can look at the advanced metrics, really. They're balanced. They do a lot of things extremely well. Top 10 rushing offense. Uh, your thoughts on uh, how good Etienne is, as we've seen him, and, and this Clemson offense? Well, he's special. I mean, he's really a special back and can do a lot of different things and has a game-breaking ability and also runs for tough yards. I mean, he's as good a back as Florida State's probably going to see all year. Uh, the thing about, you know, Florida State's defense is, though, they have done such a good job against the run, not just stopping – not just making plays at the line of scrimmage, but they haven't given up a lot of big runs. They've done it, the linebackers haven't always hit the right gap, but this defense has done a good job of, of uh, flowing to the ball, getting 11 to the ball. The DBs have done a nice job of helping in tackles. Hams on Nashville, Dean, Stanford Samuels, those guys have done a good job of coming up to help out as well. Uh, you know, I think Florida State's run defense, I think, can hang 
with Clemson's uh, rushing offense. I mean, I think that's – if you look at the matchups, there's a lot of these matchups that are not going to be in Florida State's favor. <laughs> but I do think Florida State's rushing defense is going to hold their own. Uh, I, you know, I, I think that this rushing defense is real. Even though they haven't gone up against great competition, I think we saw it against Miami – they can, they can stop the run. Well, you want to try to put it on Trevor Lawrence's shoulders. Uh, I, you know, you may got to be careful what you wish for because I think he's going to be a really good player in this league for a few years. Uh, and I watched him just pick apart NC State's defense, especially in man. Uh, and I'm going to defer to you and talk to you a little bit about Trevor Lawrence. But I do think that's the game plan is shut down the run and force a freshman to come into Doe Campbell Stadium, try to maybe put a game pressure on him in the second half and have to win the game. Yeah, this is for all intents and purposes his first legitimate road start. He started at Wake, but come on, I know I know that's a daunting place to go to. But so it's his first real start on the road. So maybe again, I'm in the right time. Now this again, remember this is the number one quarterback in the country in the last recruiting cycle. This will be his fifth career start at Florida State, and he's everything as good as advertised. Sometimes those recruiting guys get it wrong. Everything we've seen, they got it right. He's six five. He's got a rocket arm. He gets it out of there quick. He's accurate. But you know, Willie Taggart talked about it on in his Monday press conference. He said we have to get pressure on this guy. There's absolutely no two ways about it. As Ira said, you hopefully your hope is to shut down the running game or at least limit it a little bit, put a little bit more pressure on the freshman quarterback in a situation where maybe he hasn't seen athletes like this. Maybe you put a lot more pressure on him, force him into some mistakes. And I think the hope has to be for FSU is you get to that second half, you get late in the third, you get in the fourth, and it's still a game. And suddenly this freshman quarterback's like, oh my goodness, you know, I better start making some plays. He's got Brian Burns in his face. Maybe things melt down for him. I know a lot of things have to happen, but I mean, there is a scenario. If you can get pressure on Trevor Lawrence consistently, maybe he makes some mistakes. Then there's the other side of the football, and it's going to be tough sledding for Florida State. It usually is, given this offensive line and the woes that they have week in, week out. Now you're going against arguably the best defensive line in the country. You look at every almost every, every defensive metric. This is about the lone team in the country that matches up with Alabama's offense, even if we project ahead to a Clemson-Alabama rematch, which is what I think we're going to get. Um, Florida State going against this defensive line. Uh, this is a matchup that, I don't know, I, I'm supposed to ask you for hope or something. What, <laughs> what are you going to say about what they do to offset this match? Well, I can tell you what Florida State's players and coaches are saying. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. And uh, what they're hanging their hat on is, and it, you know, look, it sounds good. Basically, what they're saying is, yeah, we go up against a great defensive line every day in practice. And so that's how they're preparing. They're not going to do anything special. They know what they face every day in practice in Marvin Wilson and Brian Burns. And that's legitimate. I mean, they do have a very good defensive line. It may not be quite uh, is, is, is uh, deep in the front line talent, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of really talented depth overall. Um, but to, you can say that, but the problem is it's not like they're manhandling that defensive line in practice. I was going to say, yeah, that's just because you go against them. <laughs> if you don't have any wins against them, it doesn't mean much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we get to see those null drills at the beginning of practice, and usually the defensive linemen uh, do pretty well in those drills. I would say this. I think the, the, the idea of – just trying to, to bang your head against the wall, and I think that's something that's been a conversation all year, um, that people get frustrated when they run the ball into these defensive fronts and don't have any success. As much as people hate it, I think they have to keep doing it because I just think the idea of dropping uh, DeAndre Francois back 50 or 60 times against that defense uh, is just going to be a nightmare. So I think they have to stick with it. I don't expect they're going to have a ton of success, but I think they do have to stick with it and just – uh, you know, just try to avoid the big losses on offense. You agree with Ira, or do you put your arm around DeAndre Francois and say, young man, we're going to give you the flap jacket, we're going to try to do the best we can, but you're throwing it 50 <laughs> times because we know damn well we cannot run the ball against Clemson's defense line. Yeah, I usually agree with Five Star over there. I don't know about this one. I, I think you got to run a couple times to keep them honest. But there's, when you, I mean, what's the point of running on first down and second down? Because we're going to be second and 12, third and 15. I mean, I just, I don't see that. I do. You, you have to keep them honest to some extent. But if you're going to win this game, you absolutely need to throw the ball. You have to hope Francois is hot. You have some very talented wide receivers that those guys break out in a game like this. Again, it's a long shot, but I think it's your only shot. What is concerning a little bit about this is you look at the sample size of Clemson, what they've been able to do against a passing team last week. Ryan Finley, pretty good quarterback. Real good quarterback. You know what he did last week? 156, 156 yards, two picks, no touchdowns. That is very concerning for a team that's going to have to throw the ball that has no running game. So, I mean, I think you have to try it. The possibilities are not great here because, again, pass protection comes into play and you're playing, we talked about again, a great defensive line. So if you're going to throw the ball, I say get it out there quick. A lot of screen passes. Do not let DeAndre Francois sit back in the pocket and look around. 
Well, you know, well last week, uh, Janarius Robinson had that very successful GoFundMe to rebuild his house. I think Gene's going to have to start one for uh, DeAndre Francois' <laughs> medical uh, expenses <laughs> with his game plan. Uh, I don't mind it, though. I think for one day. He's a tough kid. Ira. you got to rely on the toughness here. All right, let's think about and uh, rethink about, I guess, the remaining winnable games that are on this schedule. I think this is pretty tra- – first of all, this is the least winnable game that's remaining on the schedule, right? Are we all going to agree with yes, that? Yes, that the is Clemson last on my list. Least- yeah, okay. All right. And then I would guess, and this is a guess, I haven't looked at your all's list. I'm just talking off the top of my head here. I'd say Notre Dame is the next least winnable game on the schedule. Yep, for me, they come in at number four. four. Uh, uh, All right, and then from there, it gets interesting. I think we're going to take NC State on the road as the third, uh, and then then one, two, or some combination of the last two, which is BC and Florida. Yeah, I've got Florida and NC State as a tie right there. I mean, you get Florida at home. Uh, it is a 3.30 game in the Wiz Palace. I think that uh, helps. That They're helps. not at night. Yeah, they don't yeah, get to get yeah. liquored up all day. So I think that helps a little bit there. I do think Florida's a bit fraudulent. We're going to find that out on Saturday when the Bulldogs take them to the woodshed over in Jacksonville at the cocktail party. So, yeah, I've got, obviously, BC, I think, the easiest game of the year, even though that's that's not easy. They whipped you last year. But BC's not the same team on the road. They're 1-2 and two on the road this year, so you got a shot there. So I, Florida, NC State right there, but you're going to have to win one of those two games if you want that outside shot of making a bowl. I would go Florida, or BC, then Florida, then NC State. I actually think Florida State's going to play well against NC State's offense. She talked about Finley and that quick passing game. I think that was a bad matchup for Charles Kelly's defense where they sat back a lot. I think Harlan Barnett playing press man, really tightening those windows for Finley to throw into. He's very accurate, but he preys on those easy passes underneath. I think Florida State's going to play better against him, and I think they have a chance to win that game. All right, when we come back, we'll uh, take one final review of the forward pass penalty uh, against Miami that the ACC completely butchered what's new there. And we'll also go ahead and go through and give you all the uh, information for TV and where you can watch all over the country. Obviously, if you're a big knoll wanting to meet up with buddies at the bar for the big upset win on Saturday over Clemson, you're going to want to be together. You're going to want to know where you can match up, and then we'll give you the keys to victory along with our selections for the other games around the country. That's all next when we come back on the WarChant.com report. Hey, this is John in Greenville, South Carolina. This is Eric from uh, New Haven, Connecticut. My name's Jared. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Nephew from Oklahoma. This is Ryan Yates from Marshall, Georgia. This is Terrell calling from Texas. This is Josh from St. Louis, Missouri. This is Roger from North Carolina. Wake up, Corey. Wake up, Aslan. It's Gibby. Still coming to you guys from East Village in Manhattan, New York City. This is Kevin. I'm up here in Ranford, Virginia. It's Chris from beautiful, sunny Phoenix. Sam Wright, all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, this is Josh from South Dakota. Just wanted to call and say love the show. First of all, I want to start off by saying I love you guys' show. I uh, really appreciate the show. Great show, guys. Uh, really enjoy it. I love uh, the podcast. Uh, big fan of the show. Keep up the good work, guys. Keep up the good work. Love the show. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, boy, Welcome back to the Warchant.com report. And don't forget, if you're headed out to South Bend, Indiana, perhaps Chicago legitimately, go to uh, GameDayExcursions.com for details on packages available for FSU Notre Dame, including the big bus trip there. We're meeting at the Field Museum, yeah. mimosas, Bloody Marys, hopping on the bus, doing the tailgate experience in South Bend, steps from the stadium. Then they bring you back to Chicago. You can do it up. You stay at the W. Oh, good times. GameDayExcursions.com, the tailgate party, a yacht party. Uh, use promo code. Warchant, simple enough. Use promo code Warchant for ten dollars off that. One last chance before we look at the keys to the victories and the other games around the country. Of course, the ACC botched that call against the University of Miami, or else that would have been the game clincher uh, on the uh, double pass play, forward pass play, if you will. Clemson is the ACC's darling right now, as they should be, the top team in the conference with the best opportunity to uh, perhaps carry the flag. If Florida State is hanging around in this game against Clemson, is there a mysterious call, another sort of call like we saw in that Miami game or like the one against us against Clemson a couple years ago uh, that goes uh, goes against it? And what has Florida State got to do to get the ACC officials on their side for once? Well, we saw Jimbo Fisher rant and rave and didn't do any good. If anything, it seemed to hurt. Uh, the more you speak out again. I don't know if there's a whole lot you can do. And I'm not really into the there's a conspiracy going on, but I'll tell you, it looks bad when a situation like that, when Dalvin Cook has a run about to put the game away and then this mysterious flag for bad call, it looks bad against Miami when the game's put away and then there's a bad call in a game like that. It's frustrating. I guess the thing, 
looking bigger picture officiating, you know, Pac 12s having major issues out there with officiating as well. I think we've gone to the point where the Power Five conferences need to get together. Let's create an officiating crews that go all around to split that don't have conference affiliation. So why put an officiating crew out there that has a conference affiliation when there is a bias or the potential for a conflict there? What's best for the ACC may not be the best call all the time. And we're seeing that happen. So it creates the appearance of impropriety when usually it's just pure incompetence. But either way, if you get if you get officials that are not affiliated with anyone, I think it solves a big problem there. Pure incompetence is a problem as well. That's just, uh, I mean, you can, it's funny to settle back on that. It beats the heck out of a conspiracy theory. But when you say, well, that's just because they're not very good at what they do yet again. Well, the problem is perception. Even if there is not a conspiracy, the perceptions are there. I mean, when we I think uh, I would post something on the message boards yesterday. Oh, my, my, my uh, 3 2 one piece. And I talked about, I think Florida State might have a legitimate chance against Clemson. It's going to be closer than I think some people think. And people are saying, well, it doesn't matter. The, the, ref will, the refs won't allow it. And I, there is a perception <laughs> out there yeah. that that's going to happen. And, and the problem is, and there's a lot of problems, but one of them is the, this replay. They've, go, they've gone to this collaborative re replay where the replays are done, not even in the stadium. It goes back to the home office in Greensboro where you have basically – it, you just have this perception of a, of a room, a dark room. It's sinister. With Somebody like twirling smoke. their mustache. Yeah, who does this help? Swaffer's the back throws. there drinking yeah. his red wine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then that played out in that Pac-12 game where you have somebody calling in that's not even there, uh, somebody in, in, high up in the Pac-12 to make that decision. They, there needs to be more transparency, and I think Gene's on to, to the right point. And Mike Leach, Washington State's coach, he apparently sent a nasty email to the Pac-12 complaining, saying, you guys are afraid of USC. You guys, you guys are bowing down to these other schools. It's a problem, and it's a perception problem. Whether or not there's a conspiracy, right. no one knows, but there's a perception. There needs to be more transparency. There needs to be some, uh, and I think Gene's right. I mean, I think the idea of a consolidated efficiency, there's so much money in this sport now, they need to clean this up. All right, let's get to the uh, three keys to victory here. And I actually laid out a list before predicting Miami to throttle Florida State, and it didn't happen. Florida State was able to hang around, probably should have won the football game. But I said if they were going to go on the road and win the game, I thought a lot of things had to happen. First of all, I thought they had to score first. I think that's true yeah. here, too. I thought they had to get a big special teams play in that game, and they did get a big special teams play. And I thought they had to create a short field off of a turnover and get something going in that way, take the crowd out of it. And all three of those things happen, and Florida State narrowly pulled off the upset. It would have it would have would have been something, right? I think without question, you gotta get out in front, can't play from behind here. I also think you're gonna need a big play on special teams, and I think you gotta try to create turnovers. Brian Burns did a good job having a great year. I know I questioned his ability early in the season, but he has proven me wrong and played well. Maybe a blitz, maybe something happens where we create a turnover and get that crowd into it and get Clemson thinking a little bit about what's on the line. Isn't this the game where all the luck should turn Florida State's way on the fumbles? What's it, what's it now, like 35-2 to two or something? No, it's like 18-3 to three or whatever it is, but it's ridiculous. The bad luck Florida State's had on not recovering fumbles, maybe they have in this game. No, my keys are, I think for one, I talked about it, you absolutely have to stop the run. If Clemson's able to run and pass, just go home. There's just You have absolutely yeah, no chance. You're not going to beat, leave you're, the stadium, you're not gonna the beat them in a shootout. That's not going to happen. You have to stop the run, make them one-dimensional, hope the freshman makes some mistakes. Agree with you again. Special teams is a game. You're going to have to make a big play or two on special teams to stay in there. And roll into that fourth quarter in the game. That point, it shifts the pressure to Clemson. And maybe it puts the pressure on the officials. Okay, it's time for us to do it again. But either way, <laughs> you know, you put put them in that position right there. Don't, you know, if you're behind two, three scores, win a fourth, forget never, it. Heard, never heard that one before. Game That's pressure a key. on the officials. Yes, game uh, pressure on them. Maybe it's time Oh, we got to do, do it again. Can we screw them again? Lines. I love that. Like it's there's good. a TV timeout. Guys, they all give each other the look. Somebody's well, they get the call up. from yeah. Greensboro Who's saying, that, guys, guys, it's time. Who's making that call? I got this one. Next. All right, keys to the game, Ira. Uh, yeah, to me, and this is, I, I, you don't want to talk about playing safe, but you just can't implode on offense. I mean, that to me, the offense has to keep the, the game respectable, has to keep it, give the defense a chance. They did it against Miami, right? Yes. They were Until they imploded in the second half where the turnovers happened, but had they not done that, they were going to win the game simply by math, possessions. Miami didn't have enough possessions at that point. Prior to all of that, they were safe. They were yeah. smart. They converted enough on third down. Yeah, and that's what I think they have to do. I just think you cannot turn the ball over against that defense. You cannot give that offense short fields. The other thing is you got to hit the quarterback. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a dynamic passer. I mean, he is as good as yep. just with the ball in his throwing. I mean, it, it is perfect. He's good. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's really, really impressive. Good, yeah. As a freshman, it's crazy. But nobody likes to get hit. 
And they can, this defense can bring pressure from a lot of different ways. Harlan Barnett dials up a lot of blitzes. Brian Burns is playing at a very good level. Marvin Wilson, I think, has a chance to have a really big game in this game. Those guys have got to hit that quarterback and really affect him. They don't have a plan B anymore. With, with Kelly Bryant gone, it's all on Trevor Lawrence. And the last thing is, is Gene touched on special teams. I really think the special teams has gotten a lot better. It's still not great, it's, but it's far better than it was earlier this year. DJ Matthews has shown the potential to be a game changer. I think they need to make a couple plays in special teams to, to also give them a chance. All right, so moving forward, let's look at some of the other games around the country and give, us, uh, give the picks out. Uh, Washington State fresh off a big win there as they had hosted game day in Pullman for the first time ever. Now they go on the road against Stanford. It's a chance to, to see if they can... Uh, Stan's success, and uh, I actually think they do. I'll take the three and a half on the road against Stanford. Trees. Okay. I actually am going to go against my normal uh, pattern of fading, Mike Leach. I'm with you. Really? But that probably means they're going to lose this time. But I think, I mean, they got something special going on there. That quarterback is really impressive. Well, and I that can see team... him losing 24-21, yeah. tw- you know, 31-28 or something like that. That's why I'm taking yeah, the three a and a half. little hook there, yeah. yeah take, take the hook. The hook. It's a good game. Uh, USF's at Houston. You know, I had Navy last week on the road at Houston, and they missed it by a point because I like their ability to move the football. Like USF's ability to move the football. I'll take USF plus seven and a half. Yeah, I'm actually surprised they're getting that many points. I like USF as well. I'm with you. People don't want to believe in USF. They're pretty darn good. So, yeah, I'm absolutely that, – that line's too big. All right, Texas A&M is at Mississippi State. This is an interesting football game. Uh, Mississippi State plays good defense. They struggle to move the football. Uh, Texas A&M is, is – they've got athletes, obviously, and you got a, a stud quarterback. But I actually like this game to be close as well. Uh, I will take A&M plus three, but I think Mississippi State wins the game in a, in a, in a close one, you know, something like 28-27, 31-28, I think Jimbo's due for a really bad game. He used to have one or two of those. No doubt, He's always no not to Florida State, so I think this is they're going to get blown out in this game. Wow. It is going to be interesting to see how they handle success. And they've had a bye week, so they've had a little time to everybody to tell them how well they played in the first half of the season. I think, this is gonna be, I think they're going to get off to a slow start. Mississippi State can be a tough place to play. Very. Even though it's a small stadium. He may find a way to rally and pull it out, but I, I like Mississippi State as well. I've seen all I needed to see so far of Oklahoma State. They're terrible. They're mm-hmm. hosting Texas. Give me Texas minus three. Since the Maryland loss, Herman's got it turned around. I'll take Texas. You got yeah. I'm a believer now in Texas. This is uh, they're they're that. I'm surprised that line is that small in this one. And uh, yeah, I'm Texas all the way. Long Clean horns. sweep. All, all right. Horns. And finally, Georgia and Florida. Everybody seems to fall at the feet of Florida, turn the football over, do whatever it takes to make sure Florida has an opportunity to win football games. I'm worried a little bit about Georgia's psyche here. I'd like to believe they're going to win this game going away. The, the talent on the field suggests they should, but seven's too rich for my blood. Give me Florida plus seven. No, no, no. That's not lock of the week. Gonna... <laughs> lock of the week. No, I'm telling you right now. They're, they're smart and they're mad. The Bulldogs yeah. are mad right now. They're taking a Florida's fluky. That's going to come to an end. They're going to win by two, three touchdowns. I hope you're right. Yeah, I'm taking Georgia. All right, well, good. Uh, and <laughs> finally, we've got Clemson giving 14 points to Florida State. Uh, and I would tell you that uh, I love my Knowles, but uh, I don't see it. And maybe I'm as wrong as I was before the Miami game. Wouldn't that be great? I'd be fine with that. Uh, give me Clemson to roll and roll big uh, 41-14. Yeah, pretty close. Oh, pretty 40, close. 42-17. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, want, I hate going especially against the number, but it's just there's just no way. I, again, this would be my other lock if I'm a bet man. I don't bet on Florida State one way or the other, but, boy, I'd like to take Clemson. About you know what I like? One. I like that Ira's going to tell us to go to hell. Yeah. Here we go. Here Let's we go, go big Pressure man. On. You know, all I've been, right. I've been thinking about this all week, and up until about 10 minutes ago I was not going to do this, but I'm picking the Knowles in the what? upset. I'm picking the Knowles in the upset. You, I think they've got as good a defense. I think they've got a, a, a quarterback that's going to handle the situation better than Clemson's. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to struggle in this game. I'm picking Florida State to win the game. Yeah, the I'm offensive man. line is going to win that matchup. There you I'm go. Putting, I think they fixed some things on the offensive line. They're going to help them out. I'm taking Florida State 28-24. to 24. Well, at this Hello. point, my goodness gracious, then we're going bowling, guys. We're doing lots of things. We're talking about finishing in the if top If that happens, 50. we're going to look back at the Miami game. They'd be ranked and how good would they be yes. right now if they didn't get screwed over. My goodness game. gracious. I hope you're right, Ira. Can we edit this? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, ah. it's done. Go back. Can we, can we do an alternate version? Uh, Oh, man, I love your prediction. Good stuff. For Aslan, Ira, and Gene, I'm Jeff. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be well. Go Knowles. We'll talk to you next time on the WarChant.com report.